Boise State's blue? Nah, how about UCA's purple and gray pinstripes? Make room for the newest contender in the turf wars. And this new contender just got a promotion to the FBS. That's right, a new team is headed to the Sun Belt from the Diamond State. Gems are littered across this state, and I'm not just talking about diamonds. Hidden gems are found on the gridiron, too. Maybe some gems like Leonard Eagles, Rashard Keaton, Oscar Esponda, or John Flanagan will commit and join the Bear movement. Falling just short to Arkansas State in the season opener, it's time to get this squad out of hibernation. They might be competitive in year one with quarterback Will McClevin leading the charge. However, young gun Austin Myers is right behind him. Equipped with a speedy back and five foot nine Powell, he has already amassed over 300 yards, averaging 9.4 per carry in just two games. On defense, have you met David Walker? This stud is an All-American and on watch to get the best FCS defensive player award. 90 overall and clearly the best player on the UCA roster. Let's work towards bringing a national championship to Central Arkansas. Throughout this rebuild, we must play against our Arkansas foes, the Razorbacks, and the Red Wolves. And Coach SpongeBear won't be satisfied until we have a winning record against them. At 69 overall, we have a lot of work to do to get this team in shape within five years. If you're ready to soak up the pinstripe turf rebuild like I am, consider hitting that subscribe button and join your boy. And so it begins a little in-state Arkansas battle week zero hogs versus bears. As we usually do, I gotta show you the bears drip, home, away, salute to service, a nice touch, and then their alternate cursive script. In addition to a purple and white alternate. So shout out to Sands8133 for getting the bears right. Time to take on some piggies. I think when a bear goes up against a Razorback, we all know what the outcome would be. Just got to prove it here on the gridiron against Taylor Green and his squad as he just busts right through that play. Holding's going to bring it back, but I think I'm going to decline and go fourth and four. I thought maybe that would give our offense a chance to get some points instead of giving them a third down opportunity to score. They go down the field and score anyways on the next drive. Offense non-existent. I'm going to take control of Walker here who is a beast at bringing down the quarterback he got in there with his buddy Chase now it's a two minute drill for McKelvin to lead his Bears with the speedster Powell and see if we can get some points before halftime shifty move from the five foot nine back if you've been paying attention to UCA football which I'm sure many of you have not you would know Powell's off to a pretty good start nine yards per carry is impressive no matter the FCS or FBS no longer in the FCS we're trying to prove our place here in the FBS could not get it to Cam Robinson their guys versus our guys I see someone that spreads open it's Paige after Paige spread it open let's give it back to Powell see if he can find pay dirt cut it up down at the one feed that man the rock cashing in for our first bears touchdown of the rebuild it's been a pretty low scoring scrap here going into the fourth quarter against the Razorbacks. They have a 17-7 lead. Will's over here putting a good drive together for his squad. Dumped. Second and 19, looming. Just want to pick up some yards. Cam, no. Maybe Powell can slip up the field here. He was about to. He still came down with the catch, surprisingly. And it's fourth down, go for it territory. Need a big touchdown right here. And I think we can get it. Oh no, I thought that route was the zig. I'm sorry, what am I talking about? Will misread that one, obviously, wink, wink. So instead, we're probably gonna drop this first game against Arkansas, which kind of sucks because we got it close just no cigar. No worries because I'm proud of the performance, keeping it within three. We have many years to get better and eventually take this series back to central Arkansas. David Walker just padding up the stat line, two tackles. Nah, but on a real note, this Sunbelt defensive player is going to wreak havoc on the conference. Shoot, I'm expecting mascot Brewsty Bear and Sugar Bear to turn this crowd around. We're 0-2, but finally get our homestand opening off the season against other Arkansas rival, the Red Wolves. Who's ready to see a little pinstripe turf action? I know no, it's the moment you all been waiting for. Our first look at Will and the Bears on the turf. Third and six. Gonna go over the middle and get hit in the process. Gotta do whatever it takes to get our fans in the game. Raynor and the Red Wolves, they play Central Arkansas more often than not, but we gotta prove our dominance. Bro, this is crazy. The turf is such a sight to see. Heck, I might have to find a reason to get up out here in Arkansas to catch this live field in action. As they dump it off to their running back, oh my whiffs. Linebacker room needs to hit the weight room. Right, not the weight room, just the coordination room. How do we miss on that? Looks like we're on pace to go 0-2 against Arkansas rivals, which is directly contradicting our goal for this rebuild to assert ourselves against Arkansas. It's only year one. We got lots of gems to find in the rough. You already know I'm not going down without an earnest try here from Will and the boys. Maybe running back Powell will have a mismatch out there, which he does with 95 speed. No. Yeah, I've about seen enough. Sorry to all the guys out there on the current roster, but I need to tear down this team. Off to an even worse start than when we played against Arkansas. 
Arkansas State is really putting it on to us. I gotta get the viewers a touchdown here on the pinstripe turf before we go ahead and wrap this one up. Third and 14, maybe a dump out here to the tight end McClawler, see if he can fight for some yards. Instead of a 52 yard field goal, I'm gonna go for it and trust our running back Powell will catch and run out the backfield. Working our way down into the red zone, let's go ahead and take this one to Cam Robinson who cuts it upfield first and goal. Feening for some points up here. Will getting a little magical with his legs and he's got a hole. Touchdown, good find. A little slow on the burst, but once he gets going, he's in good shape. Still a sliver of hope in this game. It's actually not over yet, but it's gonna come down to this big fourth down. Does Will have the willpower to win? No, he does not. Not even close. 35-7, Powell getting stuff. That's gonna seal it. Maybe we can get one more highlight run up in here. Yeah, the Bears need help and fast. Yeah, this team is gonna be on life support. The Sun Belt might give us fits. We lose 35-13. Not an ideal start on the recruiting front. We're starting to lose some battles here. Notably, Leonard Eagles falling to third, probably gonna commit to Ohio State. Got a couple visits on deck for players like Rashard Keaton and Oscar Esponda here, two five-star gym defensive linemen. I want both of them at our school, but as always, I'm worried about losing out to the big boys. Might need to cut my losses on JJ Storm, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Getting rid of Storm allows us to go to the players we really want and hopefully swing things into our favor. In Richard Keaton's situation here, let's just contact friends and family and then do the same for Richard Chavez. Coach SpongeBear here quickly using his points to up his recruiting abilities. A focus being placed here on the defensive line and linebackers as well as receiving game. Because let me tell you, we need help four straight losses before getting our first win against Southern Miss. North Texas moved into the Sun Belt at the same time we became an FBS school and it looks like it's paying off for them 5-0. Some key visits coming in against Troy. But let's see if we can finish out the season with at least three wins. Before we advance the week, I had a sudden realization that I need to take off points here for Leonard Eagles. Breaks my heart, I was hoping to land him. But realistically speaking, he had his eyes set and locked in on Ohio State. I want to ensure that we can grab the players left on our board, so I spread the love across the remaining key players. After what looks like a nail biter, 42-38 win over Troy, bang, we got Rashard Keaton from downtown. Out of Brentwood, Tennessee, five-star gem. Gonna be bringing the heat with the pass rush, 88 finesse moves, 85 speed. Low key bad news here, we're losing ground on Flanagan and it looks like Alabama swooped in to get Chavez. My only hope is we secure the other side of the defensive line. Practically identical stats here to the likes of Keaton, another gem, edge rusher with 87 finesse move, 86 speed. I'm so excited to bear down with this defensive line. With some points freeing up, I'm now turning attention to some three-star players like gem Miles here, 93 speed, a receiver that would help us out in the long run. It's official, we lost Flanagan again and Chavez but we did just land the next trophy winner at a trophy club Texas I'm telling you these two dudes got the whole fan base excited and not worried about the bad season we're having this fan base is dreaming on the future because year number one in the FBS was not it capped off with defeat 30 to 7 loss against Old Dominion 2 and 10 we fell representing from the Sun Belt North Texas got in there and took down number two BYU by the end of the season it was rather predictable Oregon in there again against Michigan I can't really explain what happened here, but we went up in prestige after a two-win season. Because man, where do I even begin with this team? Will had a average year at best. Mr. Powell must have got injured, so he didn't get many touches. Need to get him right in his final season next year. And then outside of Cam Robinson and Scooter Page, the receiving room was non-existent. The story on defense is, well, there wasn't a defense showing up. Biggest surprise here is David Walker only amassing two sacks and one interception. This is really inaccurate because homie in real life through two weeks already doubled this amount of production. Safe to say, we need to improve on every front and it's not helping us that Powell's actually transferring away. Literally nothing we can do to persuade players like him. Also gonna lose five other contributors. Some players leave, but the real ones come in. Tim Trimpuka is gonna be a great addition to the DB room. He's got a star, so he's gotta be good. He's got a gem and you know how we feel about gem prospects coming to the gem state. On the bright side, we're about to haul four-star gem receiver Quincy, getting closer on a four-star gem quarterback in Keenan and maybe, just maybe battling it out for this four-star safety. Further 
addressing some needs we take to the transfer portal and add these five players. Hope David Walker enjoys his time in the NFL after that third round selection. I feel like he could have boosted his draft stock if he just had a really good senior season. It may be transfer portal season, but we got some big high school commits. Quincy, Isaac, welcome to Bear Country. It might be time for a new quarterback in Central Arkansas, Eddie Lee Marburger from UTSA. Here's what I don't understand that just happened on the recruiting front. Keenan Anthrop had us locked out for the last few weeks, and all of a sudden, in the final week of the portal, I can recruit him again. You know that means I'm going to lose him on visit week to Purdue. I'm actually baffled why that happened. Sucks we lost the quarterback to Purdue, but at the end of the day, 28th best recruiting class with a couple five stars on the line, not too shabby. Training results are in, and we're up to a 79. Transfer quarterback Eddie Lee Marburger at the helm. New running back recruit in Sony. A couple big transfer receivers like Ruben. And then Sydney Stewart here, a Juco transfer, a star, six foot six tight end. He had some really good intangibles like 86 speed, good catching. I'm just surprised some of the attributes here are bringing him down so much. It must be the blocking. But come on, man. I seriously can't wait for Rashard Keaton, star of the defense. Really, really good stats and so much room to grow. His counterpart, Oscar, on the other side of the line, another elite dev. 80 overall homie with a lot of room to grow as well. And you know he's going to be an intimidating force on the line with that crop top. Rounding out the group with three-star gem linebacker Javier and day one elite starter in Isaac Simonson. Defense is young with a lot of freshman starters, so it's going to be interesting to keep an eye on that. Schedule for year two of the rebuild is a lot of the same. Arkansas in the beginning, ranked matchup against Oklahoma State before finishing off with Sun Belt across the board. And Despacito, Alex Esposito, looks like the right man from the job from Copperas Cove, Texas, 95 throw power, 86 speed, platinum extender, good stuff. If he can't get it done, my eyes are dead set on Marvin McBride. Exactly the play style I dig, 91 throw power, 94 speed. For my user, linebacker Dalton Crispin, a crispy five-star gem fine, 93 speed, 90 tackle. As you can tell, the Bears are getting pretty aggressive here. A lot of five and four-star talent. Turning a new leaf in Bear football, it's week one against the Hogs. Finally, at long last, the offseason is over and we can all soak up the purple and gray stripes first down Arkansas. Taylor Green's back leading this team. We got the salute to service uniforms on. I'm going to take control of one of our new defensive linemen flopping to the ground, but already a star under 90s name. Hold on. Did I see that correctly? I did. Keaton is a true freshman in his first ever game, and he's already recognized with a star on the defensive line. He's going to be dangerous. To get effective pressure, though, we need to shore up the secondary. On the other side of the ball, Marburger and this offense look really different. Let's go see what they're about. Noga first down. Clearly not about much if we're going to have to punt it back on the first drive. Taylor Green skirts out of the way of Keaton and then spin moves to the house. That was a glitchy burst. Taylor Green, I guess he's like that. How can we hold them down? That's how they get it. And it's no Good. Gotta curve that ball to the left more, son. I'm itching for Marburger to show me what he's about. He's got some weapons, got some transfer players out here. Let's see if all of them can hold steady as he takes a shot to Ham. He has a step, and he's gonna be out of here. Down at the 20, the 10 within the five. Insane play there from the running back. Now Ruben gets us closer. Read option. Marburger's keeping it. Touchdown Bears. This is our territory. No one comes into central Arkansas without a fight. Looks like the Razorbacks are about it right now putting on a show. In the first half, Taylor Green has 100 passing yards and 100 rushing. No problem here. Marburger was itching to get out of UTSA and we need him to play his A game. Show me what you got, young fella. Stewart over the middle. That's our tight end. Was super excited to find him from the Juco level and he's a receiving machine. I can tell he's got the it factor from a receiving perspective to be that guy. And that's exactly what we're doing on this drive pass reception catch and run Ruben just took off and out of there he scored with five seconds left before the half we tie this thing up I don't know what your guys like signature symbols or chants or things are I tried even googling it couldn't really find it so rawr just like year one we got another battle on our hands this time though it feels different with Marburger at the helm he's making good decisions tucking it 
running down the sideline. We'll get all the blocks. Eddie Lee Marburger. Have a day, young man. His trusty tight end on this one has hauled it in. Yeah, he's gonna be a problem for the next couple years. Again, I don't really care about the 67 overall. He has the intangibles to make magic happen. Second and 10, let's just keep it underneath. We need some room away from our own end zone. Against our own five yard line here with the lead, Ruben gets us a first down. And Arkansas fans, you might want to look away. This thing's gonna get ugly here in just a second especially if we can score again burning timeouts we can end this game essentially with a first down pounding the rock with duncan ham here up the middle two minute warning stops the clock it's a pitch to no god no good ain't no way we come this far and i punt we're ending the game right here with our own bare hands get it bear down bears it's bear season. Marburger just delivered and won us this ball game. I can't believe it. Arkansas Falls. What a way to salute our troops in the salute to service unis. A taste of glory to come as we rebuild this team. Getting his name on the board in his first ever game, Rashard Keaton racked up a sack. Not bad in your first ever game against an SEC opponent. Ruben with the monster game against Southern Miss and all of a sudden we're three and three. Lost the user of our dreams. Dalton Crispin chose Alabama. And then for whatever reason, we got locked out because our playing style just wasn't good enough for Despacito Espetito. Oh no, for some reason we can't get Marvin McBride in on a visit until week 12. Literally our last hope here at the quarterback position. Our first commit a bear season, it's Manuel Polanco, but dog, it's not looking good for these other five stars. We literally fell behind on all of them. Coffee, Bill Stock. Year two, definitely taking that incremental leap. We're four and four, which is not great, but we just won against Arkansas State, meaning we won both Arkansas matchups. And heck, we jump in here against a good Louisiana a team get the win all of a sudden we have five of them suckers and it's a much better year too defending the home turf fourth in inches let's bring it esponda has a star under his name but he couldn't get off the block in time to stop that running back as you might have guessed the raging cajuns able to score but we strike right back stewart takes us there ham goes backwards so you know what it's a back to stewart quick strike around the linebacker and in for six you need guys like marburger to just be the building block the bears can dream upon i mean he's a senior i get it he's fumbling the ball he's not perfect but he'll at least hold us off for a year or two. I guess what I'm trying to say is he's not the permanent solution, obviously. He's just a guy that is needed to keep the rebuild going. You need guys like him to get in there and make things happen. The more wins you get, the more prestige you bring to your school, and one thing will lead to another. You will be competing for big prospects. The more you start to get those big prospects, the more you'll be ready. Ready for the big dance, that is, and ready to stop fourth and goal attempts. Way to get back up and make it done. Gorgeous fourth down stop at the red zone. That finished off their first half, and now we're back in action, second half. Looking to take the Bears to their first bowl game. We can get there. Just gotta sprinkle in some belief, but two wins away from a six win season looks kind of feasible. Cam Robinson about that action. Ahead of a good Louisiana team right now until we just got cooked in the secondary. Game's all tied up. I got an itch in to do something big out here in this RPO. Oh my goodness, Robinson came away with that. Are you serious? Should have been deflected. Instead, it goes into Cam Robinson's hands as he hits the pose. What a turn of events here. Let's just hold on. Time to defend our stripes. Fourth quarter action upon us. First down, Louisiana. Oh man, he had that receiver get right through the secondary. First and goal. Might come down to our offense to win it. Because the way Collier's moving here, he might cash in and that be that. He breaks free of a sack and scores himself. That was nuts. Was that one of our young guns trying to get in on the sack? Now it's time to take him to the cleaners. Tie ball game. All we got to do is get field goal range. I'm pretty confident, so I turned on chew clock because I think we can get chunk play after chunk play. Big day from our player there as look at Marburger fight. Cam and Marburger, good chemistry as they are taking us to the promised land. Ham up the gut. Louisiana running out of timeouts that they can call. This is obvious field goal range and it should be easy. Last handoff here to set up the chip shot. It's a ham bone. Good spot. Since they got a bonus injury timeout, I'm actually gonna snap it one more time. Get a few more yards or not. It doesn't matter because as the final few seconds wind down, we get the kick off 
right down the middle game winner. Bears are victorious. Watch out, Sunbelt. We will be competitive in just a year or two. Coach Bear Sponge knows what he's doing. I'm glad we had some success on the field because I'm not gonna lie. This was actually one of the hardest recruiting classes I've ever had. Literally missed on all the five stars. Managed to get a couple four stars like Phillip and star DB Josh Hawley. Manuel Polanco was the only other signee all year long. For as bad as the recruiting class is, at least our play on the gridiron was up to par. Seven and five got over the hump and look at this. We get to play in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. I was really hoping we could do this, yet a snowstorm came in to Boise, Idaho, covering the blue turf with white snow. I'm not worried about a pack of hungry bears in a snowstorm. They're gonna find a way to eat. You can see the blue turf peeking through the snow. Boise State is known for their iconic blue turf. As they were the innovative thinkers on colored turf, doing it before everyone else kind of followed suit, just like Central Arkansas. Bears wanna show the purple and gray is a way cooler turf. If you're placing bets on this game, I would think that the stripes give us the immediate advantage. Now in San Jose's defense, they do play in the same conference as Boise State, so they have an opportunity to play on the blue during the year. However, that is all coming to an end. If you have not heard already somehow, oh, come on, we crash. I don't know why my game's been doing that more lately. No longer a snowy blue turf because we had to reload the game after crashing, rudely interrupting me of saying that San Jose State is no longer going to see Boise State in the same Mountain West Conference. Boise State has moved on to the Pac-12, which is crazy. As we're getting shut out here, 34-3, San Jose State had the advantage, and we lose the Idaho Potato Bowl. Looks like all the preparation on the stripes this year did not pan out. I think it could have been a different story if they let me finish and play the game on the snow like I was doing, but no. Not today, I guess. <laughs> Heading into the off season, I decided to part ways with Randy Contrell, and I brought in CJ Vickerson, just the motivator we needed. Plus, it was important to me that he had secondary recruiting traits. Here's the deal. Eddie Lee Marburger had a decent season with transfer receiver Ruben leading the way, and at least Oscar deserves an Oscar for his performance. Rashard Keaton's got to step it up, but all in all, this team has to step it up and up. Little transfer portal action, and it's nothing but little this time. There are a lot of guys on our list. I want to hit big, too, given how light a recruiting class was. So Solid little haul to round out the portal, but this class was not as good as the first one. Definitely taking a slight step back here with the 54th best class. Going into year three, we knew how insane it would be to land those five-star gem linemen, and look at this, 90 and 91 overall on both ends. They're literally only sophomores in NFL bound already. 95 finesse move. I just realized we lost prestige after a seven-win season, yet we gained prestige when we had a two-win season. Priorities are all wrong here. This year, we're starting off week zero with Sam Houston before taking on our Arkansas rivals throughout the season and ending with Arkansas to finish. For the Bears, it's another year, another transfer quarterback at the helm. This time, Eric Alma is only a sophomore. 94 throw power and decent accuracy. I'm okay with this. The receiver room got better with Quincy taking a major year to lead. With Phillip joining us, we should be in good hands. Year three, time to continue our winning ways, pivoting towards a championship caliber team. Recruiting in the last year was a little bit difficult, but the transfer portal came through with some clutch finds including the starting quarterback in this one. A little bit of week zero action here for Almas. I'm definitely excited for this season to see what the team is made of, finding Bell here on the run. Excited to also see the defense and how our star defensive ends will be able to bring home the pressure. Fourth and three, Sam Houston already getting comfortable here, going for it and decked, destroyed. K Bloom on the last sack, setting up our team with great position here to get some points and start the season off strong. Holding brings that last play back. And I think we've been building in the right areas, but the thing that concerns me most for the long, long term in a rebuild here is our offensive line. That was an egregious miss by Almas. How are you going to miss the tight end wide friggin' open? We'd probably be better off settling for three points, but that's not what we do. We try to go for it. Get cute. No. A sloppy first half. I need Almas to get his act together here. So when in doubt, let's just go one on one, throw one deep to our speedster who secures it. It really just takes a player or two to spark this offense up and on fourth and 25 we really could use a spark right about now this offensive line is dog water super questionable play calling from the coach i get it but the offensive line man they can't seem to hold up for very long until the pressure gets to us but that touchdown thankfully gets us on the board and in the lead the bright spot is definitely 
the tight end. That is if we can ever find him in action, just like we find Ogden DJ. A couple big plays here, setting us up in a favorable position for Almas to step out of a sack and score. That's determination and the bare grit I want to see out of our QB. Sam Houston scores in the blink of an eye, but goodness gracious, ain't no way we keep doing that nonsense. Almas has been sacked seven times already. Let's friggin' rebuild our offensive line, please. Please. Let's see if we can return the annihilation to Sam Houston's quarterback. Down to first and goal. They want this touchdown bad, and they get it, tying the game up. The Bears have let the Bear Cats single-handedly back in this game in the fourth quarter. Chalk up sack after sack after sack until thankfully we find Stewart. Definitely need a playmaker to bail us out from time to time because our offensive line, I've complained about it all game long. It's evident today. Almost definitely on pace to become the most sacked quarterback this year. Third and 10, we're flirting with field goal range. I need to see something. No shot we get this far and I punt the ball. Let's go test the one-on-one -on -one outside here. DB just played better. It literally happened so fast, but we're losing now, believe it or not. We're losing. Almas going through his audibles, making sure everyone's just going to clear this thing deep. Maybe we'll send it. Maybe we'll scramble. One thing's for sure. It's a mad dash down to the goal line. Literally sacked. I think, what is that? Like 10 times now? I can't believe it. Just going to test one-on-one. -on -one. No bueno. Fourth and six. Maybe our tight end Stewart here in the corner. He's got it. We'll shoot. I'll be darn keeping everything alive right now. Hold the phone. Until we got decked again on the last one. Let's just send one into the end zone for our receiver intercepted that's ball game i don't care what our overhaul says this is probably the worst feeling team i felt compared to last season or the season before hot take i know but this offensive line has me feeling all down and stuff which is why one of my primary focuses is to go after guys like johnny kuhn gem tackles maybe a big boy from colorado springs brandon heflin's ready to bear down on that line regardless the team needs help if we're gonna thrash opponents year in year out when i say things don't go to plan that is the story of this rebuild so far on the recruiting front More more guys just locking us out across the board that we were in the lead and clear for takeoff, man. What the heck? The championship contender deal breakers coming back to bite us. Since we just talked about thrash, it's time to welcome Joey to the team. Another six foot five unit that should make an immediate difference as a pass catcher. I just can't stop gushing about this Oscar dude. Like, oh my goodness, these bears are clawing through anyone in their path. 12 sacks for Oscar through seven games. And Rashard Keaton has 11 of them suckers on the other edge. That's right. Right, that's only through seven games. We are three and four, hit a rough patch there, losing three in a row, but then winning the next two. Maybe we can get in a little run here before the final five. Back in good graces, landing a five star Johnny Kuhn. We're upping our offensive line finally after long last. The six foot six stud is a big way to do it, guaranteed elite dev as a six star. I hope we can keep pulling off wins because I still have leads on other five stars, and it's just a matter of time before guys like Georgia get in on the mix. But he's the six star after all so me being the only one pursuing it makes no sense on the bright side in other news we might have our quarterback for the future at long last chester mchesney is a five star solidified dog about to commit boom just like that the bears still on a roll we're right back in the fray for some of our favorite targets. It couldn't have come soon enough. Let's go lock down some more gem defensive linemen. The bear strategy has been obvious. A physical front line. This defense is going to be killer. Oh! Chester. Let's get tactical and start boosting Coach Bear Sponge's tactician ability. I want him coaching up our quarterback and then offensive line before doubling down with some defensive line upgrades. Oh man, that would be nasty. We weren't done beefing up the offensive line. Jay Lucian also just committed. And my goodness, we're finally pulling together a good class. Pass me the Jamerson. This three star linebacker actually will be a huge addition. Wow, this is a surprise. The Sun Belt Championship game. That's right, folks. We made it to the end of the season. Year three, six and six, not all that great. Really capped off by a five game win streak before dropping two against Arkansas and Troy. Now taking on 15th ranked Marshall. Let's jump into that title game and see what Marshall's about. A quick seven from your squad. And now they have Marshall on the ropes. Wreaking havoc on the last drive, about to wreak some more here. Big interception from Olvera. That's going to be two unsuccessful drives for the Thundering Herd in the second quarter. A reason why this game is so close. Almas was hurt for the first half or something. We had a backup quarterback in, but now he's back driving his team down the field. Need him to stay healthy as he's a big reason why we were able to win some of the games we could. 
Oh yeah, that opened up so well on offense. I can't believe it. And now a third and 11, please get that stop. Fourth and inches, almost guaranteed to go for it. And we couldn't plug that thing up. In fact, he's out of there spinning around down to the one. Down by three, fourth down for the offense. Let's just take a shot. That did not pan out the way we hoped it would. So we're forced to get creative here. All miss in and out for the six. I think if we don't recover this onside kick, we lose the Sun Belt. and oh no. I stand mistaken, 50 seconds of glory right here. Marshall giving our offense a chance to go ahead and tie it or win it. Clock is chewing, man. I'm telling you, this is a vicious, vicious clock. And that is a vicious, vicious way to end the Sun Belt Championship game. Oh my goodness. So close yet so far. We dropped the championship game by three. The Bears are on the precipice of something great, but it still needs another year or two, in my opinion. Disappointing way to end out the season, but my goodness, Keaton came out on top. 19 sacks, Defensive Player of the Year award. Also getting Defensive End of the Year award. I'm sure our right end Oscar was right behind him at number two. Goodness, the accolades keep piling up. Shoot, I was close. Elijah Rush got number two oscar esponda got three not really the type of year i want to see out of all miss or the running game in general but man oh man 19 from keaton 17 and a half from oscar a ton to be excited about from this defense ohio didn't stand a chance we won the camellia bowl and that's gonna cap it to an average season seven and seven on the dot ready for me to glaze some more the award winner in the bowl game got another sack putting him over 20 oh no despite what i thought a step in the right direction a lot of guys want to leave notably most of them were transfers how they came in and i guess back to the transfer portal they go i'll throw more persuasion attempts out there everything is failing please stay freshman middle linebacker no come on philip i just brought you in dude this is nutty we couldn't get anyone after the award winners coming through our school i'm surprised to see that apparently our team needs more defensive linemen it's got to be a depth play but marquez parker i'm happy to add him to the squad with 88 excel 92 tackle 99 percent suit yeah i'll take that gonna need more troops to replenish what's lost kurt demacchio welcome and off we go for more transfers number one target from the gem state parker is staying home start a year four 88 overall 90 overall defense the bear squad looking good and chester our true freshman star is gonna be at the helm so our fourth quarterback swap in four years but i'm optimistic this one will finally stay Traylon naylor a big time three-star elite dev find 99 speed come on now i've been enjoyed what Sydney Stewart's been able to do for us, but there are a couple new freshmen on the block. Joey Thrash is the main one to keep an eye out for. Already a day one starter at right tackle, Jay Lucy in the six foot eight machine. Everyone already knows about our one, two threat on the defensive line, but let me introduce you to Joel. He's new to the team, just got recruited six star talent really excited to see what year four brings i believe it's gonna be a breakout season arch manning maybe first team all american but i'm starting to think this list has no credibility how are you gonna hose both of my defensive ends from this list instead we see them shine here on the first team sunbelt watch list week one shenanigans picking up right where he left off keaton with another four sack performance nothing like getting a big win in the freshman quarterback's debut couple interceptions but the bigger story here 300 passing yards two touchdowns really gonna put the team to the test against our in-state rival the Razorbacks defending the stripes Arkansas is 0-1 on the season yet they're up 7-0 against us the textbook stop by Oliveira sets up this three-point attempt the block just missed well Chester you're down 20-0 let's see what the heck you're made of let's lead the comeback and go in to the end zone touchdown avalos number 99 looking to score some points before half here down 34 to 7 let's just lob one up to our star receiver for six not really sure where the defense went because 49 points against us and only the third quarter here is actually absurd i guess i'm gonna have to put this one past us despite chester's decent performance here he feels pretty good at the touch bummer it's super out of reach so the razorbacks will survive and get a win against us the stripes were not defended this year against this pesky group but hey there's always next season i think the best part is knowing that we don't need exactly the win to get to the playoffs in the 12 team format it's not just one game that'll make or break you if we drop this one but take pretty much every other game on our schedule we could be good but shoot there's no point in thinking about 
winning the rest of our schedule when we're giving up 56 points. I don't care who they are, that's just a bad performance. <laughs> Guess who's back? Back, tell a friend. Another turf war between the stripes and the teal. Really impressive stuff from the kid and another impressive season from our friends on defense. As you can tell, despite the loss from Arkansas, we went on to rattle off a lot of wins this season, putting at least 30 points per game in most of them. Good enough for 24th ranked. Atop the Sun Belt ahead of South Alabama and Louisiana. The Bears are getting dangerously close to a point where they can run this conference year in, year out. On the recruiting front, I managed to snag a couple more five stars, Noah McGinnis and Nick Sabari, both gonna be handy additions. If McGinnis can't figure it out in the secondary, well, Brian Levron will happily take that place. Let's get on with the Sun Belt Championship game. This time we want to win it on the stripes. Saw some glimpses earlier in the season from Chester. It's just that the Razorbacks were far too tough, surprisingly, but we're gonna come out with a bang in this championship game. Quick strike, 7-0, and now the defense also starting to swarm, stopping him for fourth down. Couldn't hang on forever. By the time the first quarter was over, they did get points and not the way we wanted it. Gonna bring in another blitz here. Let's see if it gets through. Not quite fast enough. Coastal has scored two touchdowns already and heck, their rebuild has been going well, hasn't it? Chester rallies them back up to the line, dumping it out to Naylor, 99 speed. Just give him some space. In fact, why don't I see Naylor out here on this split? I'd rather have him on a vertical look 99 speed that's his forte definitely questionable not having our 99 speeds they out here a little bit sloppier than i'd like to see on offense and two the defense giving things up given our game records at the edge a little rest i'm not expecting too much pressure and wow Okay, that was bogus, and now we're forced here to go for on fourth down. It worked out the first time. Will it work out the second time? Oh my goodness. Come on now, fourth and one. We gotta get the stop. Not even far from it. He's out of there. Touchdown, Shobo. It looks like we're really about to lose a championship game. It sucks too, because now that we're ranked and if we win the Sun Belt, who knows what could have happened next. Clearly, we need some offensive tools to develop from the quarterback to the protection to everything in between. Coastal was the better team today and they got it done. Really, really stings to drop the championship game on your home turf. A good matchup in the Birmingham Bowl to finish off the year, but man, our eyes are set on next year and hopefully making that national championship playoff push. In the end, believe it or not, Coastal got into the playoffs. They beat UConn in the first round. What a matchup. And then turn around and lose to NC State. NC State beats Georgia and now they get to take on primetime buffs rebuild in full swing. This day was bound to come Oscar and Rashard declaring for the NFL draft. If we had the CEO ability, which we do not in the rebuild, we could probably have a better chance at persuading them. Oscar's out, Rashard, come on, man. No one wants to take a victory lap, okay. Two big first round players produced by UCA. They're gonna have a great career in the NFL. An important off season to keep momentum going. There are a ton of guys we could choose from the transfer portal. So we settled on the cream of the crop of guys that we could go Go ahead and try to get a few four stars in the mix. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Big time commits coming on in. UCA is on the precipice of being a powerhouse. When I talk about momentum, this is what I'm talking about. Going into the final week of the transfer portal, we pretty much got all our targets. Year five is finally upon us. And my goodness, a sophomore leap indeed for Chester. 93 overall best player on the roster. Offense looks better this upcoming season. And I just believe in general, the team is way more well-rounded. A couple key freshmen like Noah, going to be good role players in the beginning and receivers like Nick Sabri are here for the long haul if it comes down to it. Off to a smoking hot five and one start. UCA on the pinstripes destined for greatness here in year number five taking on Arkansas State giving up the big touchdown. Little Arkansas in-state rivalry. Red Wolf strike first and someone forgot to coordinate jersey callers. Shoot did we not give them the memo that we're wearing the salute to service? We're celebrating our troops in this one and we're trying to get the big win chester across his body danger interception holding's gonna help nothing in this case that's a pick it's actually mad crazy how hard it is to tell with all black versus black i guess this year was not the year uca did not even get a chance to fight for the conference championship game it's gonna go to app state louisiana they must have had the tiebreaker and that's how the cookie is gonna crumble in year five we got ranked had a decent nine win campaign just not good enough to make it to the dance truly a shame given chester's excellence 38 touchdowns to two ends. Absurd. 
absurd numbers across the board. Transfer left and Parker picking up where the team left off, 14 and a half big ones. Tulane did the unthinkable, winning it all, beating Alabama in a close one. So it's gonna come down to year six. This has to be it for UCA. The window to compete is right now, and I really hope I can convince Naylor to stay. Yes, thank goodness. Need a 99 speed burner like him to be the quarterback's best friend. Strap in for this next season with Chester up to a 94 overall. NFL bound Traylon Naylor, 96 overall, 99 speed burner. And in this season, all eyes on coach Sponge Bear here as he equips his receiving game with some more ammunition. I'm eager to see what he can do. A very productive season here, eight and two at the time of the first college football bracket. UCA representing at the Sun Belt, really talented cast of star players, maybe not as deep as some former years, but it's still good enough for right now to hold on to the four seat. John Saban knows this team is special and he does what anyone else should be thinking and doing right now, committing to UCA. This is the place to be. Javier Hewitt knows what's up. Into the Sun Belt Championship game. This one has eluded us for a while now, but UCA ninth ranked in the nation off to a commanding 21 to 10 performance tack on another touchdown bear down baby i mean i know this is in arizona but hey what did the bears say let's go sick them claw them slowing it down to one play at a time oh my goodness what was that a pick six or something old dominion got the lead there for a split second but uca with a 10 point differential here in the final minute that is gonna prove to be enough to get it done 39 29 it looks like the bears have a date to the national championship given one thing leads to another they should be defending in a strong opponent here winning the sun belt looks like west virginia out of the big 12 got our spot so we're gonna have to go the long way starting up with a matchup against notre dame and did you all see who notre dame's got that's right the heisman winner in danny finch an impressive stat line an impressive team i think chester can take him an amazing Amazing connection formed with transfer receiver Jojo DeBeer. 17 tutties. Another year, another defensive end stepping up. 13 sacks for Reggie. Down 6-0 to the Irish. Chester, I need you to start coming alive. Looking into Angel. Good move there. Breaking some angles. First and goal. Hey now, Chester, what you got for me across to Claiborne? Third and goal. Let's toss it to Claiborne. See if he can carry this rock into the end zone. Not quite. Might be smart of us just to settle for three points so we can get something on the board. Mick Chester. Destiny has so many great options out here to go to. Yeah, he looks for Sabri. If you don't recall, that's the true freshman. Maybe we need to throw this one to DeBeer's way. There he is. Touchdown right before half. That is the insane transfer. You're kind of crazy when you put up 17 touchdowns. Defense hanging in there up to this point, but this is a big play. Third and goal. Are they going to get six? They do. Doesn't mean Chester and the Bears can't strike back. Now down by three, we're going to hand it off to Elkins. Try to get around the edge. You know what? Where's that gem tight end that we love? He's covered up. So we're going to drop it to Angel. Third and goal at the one. Was looking in Thrash's direction, but we'll just take a touchdown up the middle to Claiborne. Holding on to a one point lead in the fourth quarter. If we can just dwindle the clock out, I'm going to be mega impressed. Just walking into Notre Dame's home like this and putting on a show. The new coordinator that we brought in brings in motivator making our guys hot to start the fourth quarter so maybe that's a portion of the success all in all i do know this is a full team effort and i hope the notre dame player gets better never want to see someone get hurt but that's like a free timeout they've gotten all the way down into field goal range and they're gonna take it i was afraid that that would happen and now i'm looking in chester's direction to lead the team down the field into field goal range of our own i'll take that any day of the week for starters one play and we're here without a doubt we need to be more comfortable about this position and oh, he was open. Who's going to be our hero? I think we can go to Young Gun. No, a 49-yard field goal is just not my wheelhouse, especially in this atmosphere. So we're forced to go for it, which we do. How did he let DeBeer break free like that and smartly goes down at the one? What probably could have been an interception turns into a massive blunder for Notre Dame. I can't make that up. Set up the position on the last run. Now with two seconds left, this is it. The game-winning kick. Good accuracy right down the middle chip shot in for the win bears are advancing knocking out notre dame in a shocking fashion go crazy uca fans this is the run of destiny let's keep the good times rolling making the faithful proud bringing honor to the stripes fiesta bowl action here against virginia tech the Hokies looking good the sim has us in a close battle here taking the lead good little spurt there before half but virginia tech is a pesky bunch it looks like we have built the bears to a 
point where the sim believes we are a pesky group that can hang with Virginia Tech. They score on that drive, leading to a entertaining finish here at the Fiesta Bowl. All Chester wants to do with his team is just secure this game once and for all. And we can do that one carry at a time here. Claiborne again hitting the outside. He's gone. Having quite the playoffs, first against Notre Dame, and now against Virginia Tech. He's been running rampant, I would say. Second and goal. They're out of timeout, so we can really just ice the clock. Doing just that and prepping it with one more carry to Claiborne. Textbook work dwindling the clock down to the final two seconds. We'll go ahead, get the kick off, cash in for three more, and that's it. Fiesta Bowl champions, you're looking at them. The Bears move on. Nebraska and Alabama at the top, Michigan versus UCA at the bottom. A beautiful set and backdrop here at the Rose Bowl for the Bears to get some more playoff action. Just like the last one, we'll put our team to the test here with the Sim. Are we up to par? If we have rebuilt the bears well enough we should be able to keep it close with a michigan unit 14 7 right before half getting three keeping it close as i hoped it's gonna be down to the wire here 17 10 i think that's close enough for us to jump in and see how chester can hang will he be the man that wins it for the bears well that's a great strike first and goal on this first and goal play gonna go across a speeding nailer just burned everyone touchdown we're all tied up let's take this thing in our hands now third Third and 14. They're just going to hand it off and settle for three. No doubt we're okay with that. We'll go ahead and be victorious and find a way to win, I believe, in this squad. Chester has been making miracles all season long. Why can't he do another one? Yes, sir. As the clock winds down, we want three to keep it safe, but ideally a touchdown to end it. No need to panic or make a rash decision. Let's just take our sure thing. A lot of good options here to get involved, just like a wide open and Jojo De Beer for six. With the game winding down, that was way too open for us not to capitalize. First and goal at the one. They're seriously dwindling this thing all the way down and got it. Man, oh man. Somehow they missed the extra point, but it's not gonna matter if we can connect right here. Please say it's on the money. Nailer, 99 speed, Tyreek-esque. Let's go down. Unbelievable swing of events here to finish out the Rose Bowl. Taking our time out and let's go for the win. Another 20-yard chip shot a sure thing out of the reach of the diving defender that's game the bears have done it again and they're headed to the national championship game insane fourth quarter fireworks one final game to complete the dream run it's against nebraska they've had a cinderella story themselves bears corn huskers a 10 seed versus 12th seed this is it this is what all the hard work comes down to four to five quarterback changes in this war room. Tons of defensive stars coming and going to the NFL. I think the Bears have built themselves a nice program that should easily last and take care of business in the Sun Belt. Nebraska, on the other hand, I mean, that's always a pesky unit you gotta watch out for. We'll keep a close eye on the 12 and three corn Huskers and see if we can get the job done. Defense wins championships. That's been the MO for this Bears team. We've had so many NFL bound defenders come through this program already and in year six is actually super impressive to see this team compete at the biggest stage i'm trying to jog my memory i can't think of any fcs program to come to the fbs and have immediate success quite like this wow and i'm more saying wow to the fact that I just missed two wide open guys in the end zone down seven zero we can't let any freebies like that get through touchdown tight end zone a minute to go chester in the bears clawing and fiending for more points so much so that we're about to call a play we don't recommend doing it home fourth and five against your own end zone going for it and converting to jojo to beer don't do that at home folks we're trained professionals and now we're back in action with the bears just continuing to drive inside zone claiborne makes one man miss and a second in field goal range we might just say forget the field goal let's go all the way not sure what kind of defense they're playing out there but i don't recommend it if you're actually trying to get a stop holes continue to open up and let's take our six to angel well on our way to a bears victory let's keep it rolling next thing you know you look up it's the fourth quarter and you realize they're down 31 10 what happened nebraska no solution or resolve against 
a pesky bear squad. Central Arkansas, this one's for you. Pop the champagne. And so close to bringing home the shiniest gem of all. Diamonds are cool and all, but when you're bringing home the shiny national championship, that's the best prize that one could possibly get. I guess what I'm trying to say is that for a state called the gem state, this is the crown jewel going forward. Arkansas, Arkansas state. Y'all better take notice of the golden standard we're setting here with the bears. We play on the stripes for the stripes and we sure as heck earned our stripes in this one. Couple more carries. This thing is over. The final snap in the national championship game. It's falling in for a touchdown fittingly so. Bears cap it off on an exclamation mark. 40 big points over Nebraska. The true freshmen talk about a highlight moment in their career as the rest of the team runs out onto the field to celebrate this grand accomplishment. Six years later, we have a national championship to show for it. Gotta give it up to King Sponge and Coach Bear Sponge for putting together this squad so fast. The tone was set by bringing in two NFL bound left end, right end players to get the squad right. Once they committed and believed in UCA, it didn't take long for the rest of the nation to take notice and believe in this squad as well. I had so much fun rebuilding the pinstripe field. I'm gonna have to find a way to get out there IRL at some point. For now, keep soaking it up with your boy King Sponge. Hit that subscribe button and I'll catch y'all in the next College Football 25 Rebuild.